Well, hey guys, it's Andrew Bro, and in this video, we're going to be walking through uh, setting up a class inside of Zoom. So we're going to go out to zoom.us and go ahead and log in. I'm going to already assume that you've taken the time to log in once and kind of get your account set up. So the first time you log in, um, I believe that it's going to start you out over here on uh, my profile, but this should um, already be all set up. I mean, it's pretty basic, uh, just creating your profile and all of that. So we're not gonna cover that in here. What we are gonna cover is um, some settings and then how to schedule a meeting. And then we're just gonna walk through some of the basics of launching a meeting and how things work once you're inside of it. So first off, we're gonna go over here to um, the meeting settings. And these are settings where uh, you can set them here and every time you launch a new meeting or you schedule a new meeting, it will grab these uh, specific settings. So this is not a must. You can always go through each individual meeting and change all of these settings. Um, but I do highly recommend that you uh, go through the meeting settings first, and then that way every time you schedule a meeting, they're just already there. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna see is uh, starting the meeting with the host video turned on. So I always like to do that, not a must. You can always turn it on once you jump into the meeting, but I like to just go ahead and start with it already running. Um, the same thing with participants. Your students join the class just automatically, and they can change this on their end as well. When they go to launch the meeting, they can decide, hey, I don't want to start with my video. But just have that turned on, and then the setting is automatically set to on when your students join the class. Uh, computer audio, obviously, you may decide to do telephone and computer audio if you know that one of your students is in a place where they cannot uh, be on the computer, but they do want to actually listen in to the call uh, or to the class. Uh, you could turn that on so that they could join by telephone as well. Um, but for most purposes, you're just going to be logging in on a computer or uh, an Android or iOS device. So go ahead and just leave that set to computer audio only. And you can also allow students to join before the host arrives. So this means that if the host has not shown up a few minutes early and students are starting to show up to the class, they can still log in with that meeting ID that was created um, and they're not gonna get rejected from the class just because the host is not already there. So if you do have a student who's just a crazy early arriver um, and they wanna show up 10 minutes early and you're gonna start two minutes early, they can still join the class and be sitting there waiting for the class to start. Uh, also, this is nice because for, if your students are logging in for the first time, they may want to kind of get into the meeting a little bit early and just play around with the interface and kind of see how it works. Um, I don't usually require a password um, for meetings. Uh, you could potentially do a password if you're worried that your students may have sent the meeting invite out to a bunch of other people and you don't want them um, jumping in, but that doesn't mean they couldn't have shared the password as well. So I really see no point in turning that on. Um, and then I also like to have um, the participants audio muted when they arrive because sometimes they don't realize that their microphone is turned on uh, and they'll be chit chatting with somebody beside them or there's a lot of background audio going on at the time and then it just makes uh, the call or the class really, really noisy. And you know, you can always mute them later uh, and they can also unmute themselves if they want to. But by default, when they join, I like to have them already muted, and then if they do want to say something, they can just unmute themselves and go ahead and start talking. Um, and then there is some meeting basics down here towards the bottom. You can um, disallow chat if you want to. Um, otherwise, uh, students can actually chat at you and you'll see uh, things showing up in the chat while you're trying to teach. So if that's annoying to you and you don't want that happening, uh, you can make sure that students are not able to use the chat. Um, also, you can allow meeting participants to send one-on-one -on -one messages to other participants. So this is kind of nice where if uh, two students or you have students that are not all in the same location, they're all over the country, all over the world, uh, they can be messaging each other 
while you're presenting, if they have questions or maybe they missed something, uh, they can ask another student or chat with that student while the meeting is in progress. Once again, if you think that's going to be distracting, you can always have that turned off. Um, and then you can set this to automatically save chats so that later on you can review everything inside of the chat that was going back and forth. Um, and I do believe, um, um, I, I'm not positive, but I do believe you'll be able to see, as the presenter, you'll be able to see chats that were sent back and forth between just a couple of students. Not positive on that one. Uh, private chat may only stay between the, the two students that were chatting and the, the presenter would not be able to see what they were doing. Why would you want to have chat even enabled? And that is, is I think if you're in the middle of a class and maybe somebody asks a question but you didn't weren't able to get to it, you can always go back through um, the saved chat and look for that question and then later on either create a video or uh, create um, a module or something around that specific question because it just gives you some feedback of maybe what what students need, uh, where they need more information and and things like that. Um, so most of the rest of these settings are, are already uh, basically turned on. You don't need to go in and do anything to them. They're already there. So we'll just leave them alone. And then in the end meeting advanced settings, you're only going to get those if you are on a paid subscription. With Zoom, I am doing this tutorial from a free account, so there will be some very slight differences between what I'm able to do and what you can do with a paid account. Um, over on the recording tab, we'll take a quick look at that. Um, I do have it set to allow the host and participants to record the meeting to a local file. So um, if you wanted to start the recording so you can record the class while you're doing it, this will uh, require hard drive space on your computer. So keep that in mind. It, it is video recording and audio recording everything that's taking place in the class. It can be a very large file, especially if you're going for a long time. Uh, you can disable that so that no one can save it, um, or you can leave it on and just choose not to record once you launch your meeting. And then we don't need to worry about the telephone settings because we're not going to be doing call-ins. All right, let's jump on over to my meetings because this is where we're actually going to schedule the meeting, which is going to create a link that your students are going to use to get into that meeting. So we'll go ahead and click on the schedule a new meeting and we'll just call this test class. Uh, you can give it an optional description if you want to. And then we'll just go ahead and schedule for when it's going to take place. So we'll just say this one is going to be July 13th. Duration is going to be two hours. And right now it's just pulling the system time and saying, oh, hey, do you want to start this an hour from now? And I really don't uh, because this is going to be happening in the future. And so we'll go ahead and schedule it. And we'll say that it's going to start at 10 a.m., not p.m. 10 a.m. and that it's going to be for central time, which is the time zone of uh, our school. Okay, so now that that is all set, we can take a look. We see that we automatically pulled in the settings that we just did uh, right over here under uh, my meeting settings. It automatically pulled them in. So it says video, yes, the host is turned on as soon as they start the meeting. The participant video is turned on. We're using computer audio only. We're allowing people to join before host. You see all these settings are here again, but we don't have to do anything to them because we set up those master settings just a moment ago. And that we want to mute participants upon entry. We'll go ahead and say save. And now we can see that we have scheduled this meeting and here are all of the details of that meeting. Uh, this is the important part right here and it's the join URL. And what we can do is, is we can say copy the invitation and then click this button here. It says copy the meeting invitation and it lets us know that that was copied over to the clipboard. From here, we can either go to our email 
or if you um, are sending out an automated e email through your LMS, uh, you can go there and send this text and you can even, once you've pasted it, you can modify the text however you want um, and send that out to your students. They will now have the link to that specific class and this link is specific to that exact class so nobody else would be able to join unless they have this link. So for now I'll go ahead and say cancel because we've already copied that to the clipboard. We're not going to walk through all of those steps. That is how you schedule for a future class. Now what we're going to do is we're going to jump in and we're going to see what does it look like once you actually launch the class and what are some of the tools that are at our fingertips. So that's coming up next. All right, we're now inside of the meeting and we are looking at this in, I am in full screen mode and I can see that if I move my mouse, it tells me I can exit full screen if I want to. Um, and what I wanted to show was right now, I do not have a camera connected to the computer that I am on. Uh, and my microphone that I will be using to actually do the presentation is currently muted because we're using a microphone to do this screen capture tutorial. Uh, so that is gonna be a little bit different, but you can easily uh, just click here and actually that mic was not muted. Um, that The computer that I'm actually running this on is in another location. Uh, and we're just remoting into it. So that's kind of what's going on here right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and just mute the microphone and um, I cannot turn on the video because there is no camera connected to that computer. And we can also see that I am currently the host and that I am the only participant inside of the class. So there will be some things that will be a little bit limited as to what I can show you uh, just because there are no part participants in this current class. One thing I can do is if somebody for some reason didn't show up or they say, hey, I did not get the invite, uh, you can click down here and you can um, join or ask people to join by email or you can copy the URL. And once again, you can text it to someone, uh, put it into your LMS and resend it back out. There's just a lot of different ways that you can send out that link. Uh, the big things though are, uh, once your students join, you will be able to see all of their video feeds here in the screen. So while you are presenting in video mode, you'll be able to see a thumbnail of yourself down here in the corner, and you will see all your participants. Uh, you will also be able to do things like click on one of those participants to make them a little bit larger, um, and you will be able to individually mute or unmute a participant, a specific one, if you wanted to talk to somebody and have their audio turned on, uh, you'll be able to do that as well. Uh, what I wanna do next is just show you how you can share a PowerPoint presentation while you are um, doing your Zoom class. So all of your students will be able to see the PowerPoint presentation. So what we're gonna do is, is go ahead and click down here where it says share. And I've already opened up a PowerPoint in the background and went into full screen mode. So we are in presentation mode with it. Go ahead and click that and say share. And now we can see that uh, up here in the, in the top, we kind of have a little dashboard that has popped up. Um, you can still do all the same tools that we were able to do down below. But if I move off of it, um, we will only see the PowerPoint in the background in that you know, very small, um, kind of non-obstructive non uh, piece up here in the corner. We can now step through our PowerPoint just like you normally would. Um, let's see, make sure that we're into that. There we go. And I'm just using the arrow keys. And if I wanted to point at something, I could use my pointer and, and come up here and point at it. Otherwise, I can get the pointer out of the way and I can just do the presentation, step through that presentation, and you'll notice here, um, everyone will be seeing exactly what you're seeing on your screen. And so even things like uh, the animation that just happened right there will actually show up so long as you are on uh, a PC, a Mac or a PC, 
using your presentation that way. Uh, it's a little bit different if you are presenting from uh, an iPad or um, a tablet, the presentation style is a little bit different. Uh, but for the most part, you're probably gonna be on a PC, so you can just step through it just like you would a normal PowerPoint. And when you're all done, you can just say stop share and it'll immediately go back to the class view. Now, if you wanted to start sharing that screen again, uh, you can just jump back over there and you'll notice that it's going to pick up right where we left off. This time I'm just going to double click on that and um, we'll see that it actually left off. Uh, whoops, there we go. Um, that PowerPoint left off right where we were at. So if you have a really big PowerPoint, and let's say there's like 30 or 40 slides, and after five or six slides, you wanna just leave it right here and say stop the sharing. So you can now go back and interact with the class or maybe a question came in. Uh, you'll be able to do that and then get right back in to the presentation just by re-clicking the share, going back to the presentation, saying share and picking up right where you left off. Uh, if you have any questions at all, you can comment on this video down below. Uh, or just drop me a quick email at broa at evangel.edu. That's B-R-E-A-U-L-T-A -A at evangel.edu. And I would love to answer any questions that you might have. That's going to be it for this tutorial. Bye-bye.